Welcome to the Too Home Many co-hosts. I'm your co-host, Dallas, and today we have a new co-host. His name is... His name is Sheikh Sua, the Mike Ruler, the old school. Now, uh, GD Gypsy. Yeah, yeah, GD Gypsy. I, I forgot to... I did ask you, but you never answered me what you wanted me to call you, so... I think I, think I mentioned in the post, but yeah, I didn't like send a, like a separate one. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, it's me. I'm the, the to everyone's shock and surprise. I'm the second co-host. Yeah, <laughs> you may have known him from uh, our previous uh, podcast, the Holy Crap Cast. Uh, it's a, a YouTube yeah. co- podcast. The uh, the best of the podcasts, of course. Yeah. Except for this one, now we have a new one that will yeah take the world by storm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, let's, talk, let's talk about how how we met. We met through the previous yep. podcast, which used to be called yeah. the Holy Twitter Cast. Yeah, the quick rundown, I guess, is uh, I was part of the tweeting group on disc or on uh, Twitter. Obviously, that's what tweeting is. And uh, you know, they kind of mold around a bit, like, "Hey, let's do a podcast," and then like I'm in the back, like, "Hey, yeah, whatever," <laughs> right. I didn't say anything, but they're like, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. And then a few months went by, and they're like, no, like, seriously, let's do this. And then so they started it. Uh, back then, my internet was really shitty. Um, for a little little history of me time, I ended up moving with my dad uh, during, like, my high school year. So I've been sitting, like, at this house for, like, or it was, like, right before my, like, middle school years or whatever, right? So I've been at this house for, like, 10 years that, like, has just shitty internet for, like, 10 years, right? Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, I'm probably not going to be able to do this podcasting because my internet can't connect. And I think you remember you were there like in the beginning when it was like the like my stuff would cut out all the time. And so like whatever, they record a few episodes and then uh, I join in on like the second or third episode or the hell it is. And then after a while, they're looking for like theme music, like the main member was looking for theme music and then they contacted you and that's how I met you. And then... Yeah, I I, uh, I DM'd uh, the main guy. His name was uh, in the in the. Uh... In a podcast, he he was uh, called B because in yeah. the He's not. in Twitter, he <laughs> uh, he ran the account, the gimmick account, uh, Tweet B Movie. For those who don't know, it's like we he posts like every day he posts a a word from the script, like yeah, like yeah, it's uh, a bunch of shit. the whole community was a bunch of shit posting, and we still kind of do it, but not really too much anymore. Like I definitely don't do it, a lot of others don't. Yeah, but uh, if we post like X amount of words, the most popular one was like one word a day, mm-hmm. uh, some sort of script, whether it be movie or video games or songs or whatever the fuck. Yeah, but basically, when I, uh, I heard about the podcast, I asked, I DM'd him about uh, if they needed a theme song, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's uh, let's do a contract thingy so you can get paid for it." And then, uh, well, I was like, "Okay, cool. I'll, I'll whip something up for you." And then I just grabbed one of my old files from school and I just sent that to him. And he was like, good, perfect. <laughs> Let's do that. I was like, easy. <laughs> be using your work. Uh, to be fair, though, I mean, it's like school gets down on that. A little bit of side tangent. But like reusing your work, I think, like, why not? It's like, if it's your own work, what the fuck? Like, yeah, exactly. It hasn't been used for anything else. So yeah. might as well use it. And I, I like it. Personally. I to be honest, I liked all of the music you've made for like the various podcasts that we've been. Yeah, uh, and that's not me. Like, one. yeah, yeah. Well, too many. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still but, love it. Uh, yeah, it, it's fun in like a campy, dorky way. Like, yeah, I like it. I can't remember but, who's. Oh yeah, it was mm-hmm. my cousin who's like who asked me if it was uh, based on uh, too many cooks. Uh, skit from adult swim i was like yeah it pretty much is <laughs> have you seen that one yeah. the community cooks no you mentioned it before that that's what it's based on i just i assumed it was some weird fucking sitcom from like the 90s or something like it's like um like... it's like a parody sitcom basically but it's yeah. literally just like a, a short film from adult swim it's pretty funny to to watch it if you haven't seen it okay you can, definitely, it see, you can definitely see where the inspiration came from 
but uh yeah uh so so uh gypsy you and i you you and i have a lot in common uh yeah we're both uh white men that's pretty cool (laughs) (laughs) um Um, but uh what we don't have in common is that we live in the same we don't live in the same country see i'm I'm, i'm from uh i'm i'm in canada and you're from the other other place southern canada southern canada gross <laughs> i don't know i'd, I'd kick you off your podcast so i can't do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll just kick myself out <laughs> um yeah but you're from uh you're from the west west coast right i can tell with that west. i can tell with that nirvana shirt you're wearing oh yeah totally um <laughs> yeah, I got this like years ago, and it's just I don't know. It's like a nice. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a shitty one. It's like super see through almost, but it's just like yeah, throw something on, why not? Yeah, like I'm at I'm like who's gonna be like, oh no, you can't wear the fucking shitty shirt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, a fan of Nirvana. Um, yeah, you know, I'm not like a diehard like some of these other people, but like yeah, same. Like a... Not diehard fan, but I do like their music. Yeah, I, I, to... I did a, like a, a, a side note. I, I got more into their stuff. What, what year would it have been? Like junior year of high school or something? Because I had to. I don't know if you had a similar thing for Canadian high schools, but there was like a report I had to do on like a famous. Obviously, my, mine's a famous American. I assume yours would be like famous Canadian or maybe just famous person in general. And uh, for mine, I had, I decided like you know who do I want to do right? And so I'm looking through a bunch of people, and then like the thought crossed my mind for a second for Nirvana, but I'm like, dude, someone's gonna do Kirk Cobain, and mm-hmm. so I'm like. Okay, well, how do I get that? But like, not Kirk Cobain. So I moved on to Dave Grohl. Yeah. So obviously he's the second drummer of uh, Nirvana. Actually, well, maybe third. I think third. Yeah. No, he's the second third one, one, I think. But uh, yeah, he was like the main one. For obviously yeah. he wasn't around for Bleach, but he was around yeah. for. Uh, yeah, the uh, the he was around for first like, one was Chad. I can't remember what his last name was, but the first one was original member of Nirvana. Drummer well, of Nirvana I, was I Chad. Think, I think there was one that like was there for the very short time, and then I think there was one that was mainly there for like Bleach. Oh, okay. Sure, and then there was like a then the third one would have been Dave. I don't know if you have uh, seen the version where, uh, you know the song "In Bloom." Yeah, it's like the first song that comes up on the Nevermind album. But yeah, uh, no, basically, they have they did a version where they had the Chad drummer do it for them. They they wrote that song together before uh, Dave came in. Yeah. So yeah. there was like an alternative version, alternate version. But it's, it's pretty never interesting. Heard that. Yeah, is it like like super different? It's a little bit different. It's it's a bit. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's definitely not recorded professionally. Like it, uh, it's still like in there between like the Bleach album uh, yeah. sound recording before they made it to like a because uh, in the Nevermind album they recorded it at Sound City in uh, in Seattle. If you haven't, if you guys haven't seen the documentary Sound City, it's a very very cool, very cool documentary. I would love to go. Th- uh, ooh, I don't know how it's showing up in the lighting. Probably not well. It's a, it's a, it's from classic albums. It's Nirvana. Never mind. It's like a, it's a story about the album being made. Oh, really? It's, yeah, it's like a documentary. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So like, as uh, because they were mentioning at one point, like at the very beginning, for like when they're making the album, he's mentioning that like, uh, Kirk Cobain didn't want to like double tracks or whatever, right? Because <laughs> he thought like, in a lot of like where he didn't like. Yo, dude, was that an extra hand, a ghost hand? <laughs> yeah, sorry, that's my mom handing me over something. All right, fair enough. Hello, Dallas's mother. But <laughs> uh, with that, like you know, like doubling like the the voice tracks, right? And, and he didn't want to do it. And apparently, the the producer dude was like, you know, the Beatles used to do that. And then he's like, fine, whatever, right? And that would pretty much like won him over into doing it in the album. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> a little tidbit from the documentary. That's awesome. One of my favorite things was um, when they did uh, something in the way they actually had Kurt was just playing that song in the uh, studio uh, couch 
with the acoustic guitar. And the way he was playing it, the producer heard over and he was like, like, stay where you are. I'm going to go grab a mic. And he put like a mic over to guitar and mic over to Kurt. And then he just, they just recorded that song that way. Yeah. Because it wasn't like, it was like a perfect spot where he, the way he was playing it and the way he sounded was like really good. Like a... Yeah. It was like really good sounding. And so they, instead of just having like going, taking them over to the booth and whenever, they just wanted to keep that sound where it is. Well, it's like, it's like uh, filmmakers, right? The golden hour of like whatever is like just the sun coming. It's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Like the, the golden couch of recording. <laughs> but but uh, uh, yeah, so I used to live in uh, Vancouver. Which is not too far from the border. I'm gu I'm guessing we're you're you're not in Seattle, but you're somewhere around there. No, I've been to Seattle before. I live in uh, Washington, but like uh, southern Washington, so like mm -hmm. pretty much near Oregon. So, so, like, so let's just say you live in Vancouver, Washington, and I lived in Vancouver, BC. <laughs> yeah, it's somewhere somewhere around there. It's south. Close enough. <laughs> yeah, close enough. <laughs> I I did. I've been to Vancouver, Washington. It was a pretty cool place there. We went there during my 21st birthday. And that was when we were doing the Portland trip. We we're driving down to Portland. And we stayed in Vancouver because it's actually cheaper in Vancouver in uh, Vancouver for hotels than it is in Portland. Because with, with Oregon, they don't have taxes. But with the housings and hotels and stuff, it, that's, what, that's where basically they all make their money from or whatever. Right. Whereas that's, in Washington, it's a bit cheaper. Yeah, that's why you don't uh, you don't stay in Oregon. You just drive down there and buy some expensive shit. And yeah. Look. So the, the, <laughs> the, the trick here is to basically, since Vancouver is literally like across the river from Portland, you just get a hotel in Vancouver and then just go over, just drive over like five minutes to Portland and go shopping there and stuff. But uh, yeah, that was that was a fun trip though. I uh, we were supposed to go beer hopping because I, because that was my twenty first. It was like my twenty right, first right. birthday trip, and uh, I'm not much of a a beer drinker or anything. So we went to one bar, and uh, I just ordered one of the beers on there. I didn't even know what it was. I just like like went through half of it. I tried, yeah, <laughs> one beer, please. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I basically got through half of it. I was like. It's yeah, fun. I think I'm done. <laughs> so we just like went to a pizza place after that. <laughs> it was more food hype hopping than it was beer hopping. Dude, there's got some good food down there too, though. To be fair. Yeah. Did you know that they, that like every restaurant serves like cheeseburgers? Uh, it's the American way. <laughs> but that's like I don't know why it's like a golden unwritten rule in Portland or something. But like every restaurant and every food sense, no matter what like culture it is, they always have a burger in the menu. Yeah, the, the the donut shop burger. <laughs> oh yeah, I oh, we went to that. Don't that was the famous donut place too. That was pretty good too. Was that the one you went to, Voodoo? Yes, that's the one I went to. Yeah, that place is pretty good. I've only yeah. ever had a few donuts from there like uh, people had brought some back i remember because i was in acting for a few years in high school i remember one time this dude brought back it was like a bucket like an actual bucket of like <laughs> donuts <laughs> yeah. he just grabbed a random donut in there i grabbed a grape one i was like sure why not yeah it was pretty good whereas in canada the smaller the donut the better because we have our timbits because they're a little tiny ball the, the basically you know where the whole the holes of the donut that's basically where that dough goes to the yeah. whole it, it basically becomes Tim Bits. and that's like the best thing of Tim Hortons. <laughs> but, never, I mean, obviously, because I've never been to Canada, but yeah, I've still never been to a Tim Hortons. I'm surprised you haven't been to, is considering they're like so close to the border. Well, we don't have a passport, oh. like uh, the family, yeah, I'm just there, which is kind of just like eh, this laziness thing. Oh, <laughs> you know, we uh, basically when we move, because I'm I was born in Saskatoon, and we didn't move to Vancouver until I was like ten. But so basically, I remember that, like in terms of, like if you were to say like all the way to the left and all the way to the right and then the middle, or whatever. It's like, like would you be a... 
almost in the center of Canada. Okay. But like still like in the same level almost. Uh like uh what's the what's the what's the what's the latter what's a uh ge geographical wow I cannot words today. Breath and try the Latitude, longitude type of thing. I can't remember which one, I can't remember which one's latitude and which one's long longitude, but it's the one that's like horizontal. I would guess the longitude, something about long. I, I don't know. Like, yeah, I, I probably know. probably the, about the same longitude as like uh, Vancouver. Vancouver you know, is a little bit closer to the border, but <laughs> like, um, I don't know if you if if you know what the provinces look like, but basically it's like there's like the top the top provinces and then there's like bottom provinces. The top, well, the top ones are called territories, not technically provinces. But basically, we're in like the bottom pro provinces. I was Canada. only aware of the way it was split up in like five like chunks like that. Yeah, I don't. Know. It, it's Saskatchewan and Manitoba are basically the center of Canada. Right. Um, Manitoba is a little bit more center, but it's still pretty much Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia, then, that's like way east. Yeah, all the way to the right. Like, <laughs> Nova Scotia is far right. <laughs> in terms of location, not in terms of public. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. Um, yeah, I have a couple I play with online. Dude, that's so cool, by the way. Just a side note. Like, the way you have it, like, in the background, how it's all, like, blurred out to focus on you. Yeah. You just see a cat, like, slowly come up, and it's oh. just like a blob. Slowly, yeah. like, the figure becomes a cat. <laughs> Oh, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't want to say hey. He's he, shy. Yeah. <laughs> He's not a co-host okay. yet. But that's that's uh that's for later. <laughs> I get a couple of meows, like record a couple of meows, and then remix it, and like you know, change like the pitch and stuff, so you can make a like <laughs> make a meow, 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 meow. <laughs> mini co-host. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> but um, but, yeah, when yeah. I was in Vancouver, we used to go down to the states a lot because it was so close by. Yeah, it makes sense. Like, we'd, we'd always go to, for, like, small trips, for, like, day trips or whatever, we will always just go down to uh, Bellingham, which is, like, literally, like, half an hour outside, uh, close to the border. Because, like, Seattle's, like, three hour. it's, like, a three-hour drive total from where we yeah. were to there. But, uh, yeah, we usually just go to Bellingham to go shopping quickly. And have like Jack in a Box or go to the food court. I think I've been to Bellingham a couple of times. I don't really remember too much about it. So it's I've not like, been to It's kind of it's just like a touristy kind of town. Mm. It just has a bunch of American shops there for us Canadians to go take a look at, <laughs> <laughs> so that we don't have to okay. so that we don't have to bother Seattle for it. <laughs> this is the famous J C Penny. Yeah, basically, literally, <laughs> we go to the Ross store a lot. That's where my my mom yeah, likes to go to, and I like to go visit the Guitar Center too. Yeah, that makes sense. I actually got this oh. mic from Guitar Center. It was like only like thirty thirty bucks when it was on sale. I was like, that's a steal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then I it sucks because like um, the last time I went to the states, I just discovered the Converse store. I was like a huge, I'm a huge like Converse uh, collector. And I just discovered that store the last time we got there. I, I got, I got some shoes, I got a sh uh, pair of shoes from it. But uh, now, now I, I'm not even close to there right now. So it sucks. <laughs> we, cause we used to go to like Vegas, all the way to Vegas to, to take a look at the Converse store. I didn't, I had no clue it was, it was in Bellingham. Yeah, like you went all that way just to buy shoes. Yeah. <laughs> no, hey, I'm not. I'm not rolling the, on dice. I'm rolling on shoes. Let's go. Give me a new pair. <laughs> Come on, paradise. Give me a pair of sneakers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm more of a like. I like the fatter shoes. So I'm more of a, like a DC guy for the most part. Yeah, I but, didn't get into Converse until I used to think it was so like mainstream. Converse. I was I was such I was such a hipster, like kid in like elementary. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. I'm so cool. 
Yeah, I listened. I listened to uh, Rammstein before everyone else did, <laughs> even though I was like twelve and probably shouldn't have been listening to it. <laughs> I listened to Rammstein before they had that song in in Rock Band or Guitar Hero. Was <laughs> I actually, you know what? Seeing them, I got to see them live in 2012 when they came to Vancouver, and that's what basically made me a huge fan of them. Like before, yeah. I just I I only liked uh, Duhast and uh, Sun. Like those are the only two I I I I knew of them. I don't know before no. before uh, I went to see them in a the show, and like the concert like blew my mind. I just started, I became a number one fan from them and just went through their entire discography. <laughs> yeah. Something recently. Like a song or something? Didn't they release something recently? Oh yeah, yeah. They're uh, they're releasing a new album in end of April. They did release a song with it too. It's called uh, oh, yeah. Zeit, uh, Zeit, which is means time. Yeah. Would you uh, uh, Dallas approved or Dallas disapproved or like? Eh. It's a it's an approved for me. I I like it. I like anything from them. It has, it has a catchy uh, chorus. It's a bit slow than what they usually uh, open with. Because like in um, the last album, uh, their self-titled album, their the first song that they released was Deutschland, and that one was like a huge like hype type of song, yeah. and so that's what and that made people like hyped up for the album, which was also a huge banger, but probably my most favorite album uh, right now. Um, the whole but, time just out of Ramstein. Um. Uh, I, not of all time because uh, their new album is coming out soon, and that might just take over if uh, if it comes if it's good. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, it always hope, right? Yeah, but with this, but this time they released uh, like a slower uh, song, which was wasn't what people expected, I guess. But it's it's still pretty good. It still has a really catchy chorus, at least. Um, right. What what's uh, what would you, what would you say your favorite band is, and what's uh, what's your thoughts on their new music? Uh, okay. Well, first thing I'm gonna do because I've been holding this can, I've been waiting for the right moment. Just let's get a little ASMR action going. There we go. All right, cool. Anyway, now I can. <laughs> I'm just gonna put. I didn't hear it, but I'm just gonna put a pop can sound effect in it anyway. That's why I did last yeah. time. <laughs> But um, yeah, just put like the crispest pop sound you can get. But yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. So top top five bands, right? I I know first and second place like easily back of my hand. They they stay pretty consistently there. Third, fourth, and fifth kind of move around a bit depending on the day. Mm -hmm. So and it's the same three, but like they move around like which ones which. So like third, fourth, and fifth would be Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, Foo Fighters, and The Offspring. And to be mm -hmm. fair, I actually to be fair, I'd probably say Offspring probably three pretty consistently. Uh, fourth and fifth kind of swaps around between Red Hot Chili Peppers and, and Foo Fighters though. Hmm. But second place, Five Finger Death Punch. First place, Green Day, easily. Nice. But actually, and and hold on, I I I will prove my devotion. Give me a second. <laughs> uh, I wanted to talk to him about something, but I, I mean I'm right here. Like I'm oh, I don't mind. actually. Oh sorry. I, 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 oh yeah, Green Day Rock Band. The, the infamous Green Day rock band. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for those... That's what you can do. So, <laughs> right, more than I... I, I knew a couple of their songs. I liked them, right? But yeah. actually, that game, uh, I learned quite a few of their songs that I didn't know were their songs, like songs that I liked. Um, Brain Stew, Jaded, uh, Time of Your Life, uh, Hitching a Ride, you know, a couple of songs, like songs that don't sound as traditionally like them. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, actually, I like a lot oh wow they sing it you know type of stuff yeah so. yes yeah. I, you, you can get i guess you can get what i mean about like liking the slow songs from a band that usually plays like hyped up songs yeah. um, right right uh, i bring death punch does that every now and again so mm -hmm. like you know there's some i'll be far, far from home if you've heard that song from them it's a very slow song compared to a lot of theirs yeah um, but yeah What's your uh, speaking of Foo Fighters? What 
did you hear about the tragic news that happened? Uh, what was yeah. it last night? I think or the, Friday night. I think. I don't know if that's catching up. It was yeah, it was Taylor Hawkins, the drummer. He uh, unfortunately passed away. Yeah. Which, uh, considering in the he uh, like they just released a movie like a horror movie where he gets like brutally killed. So it's kind of kind of a oopsie timing on that. I guess. But... <laughs> But no, that's that's yeah, it was really sad. Um, because I've seen some stuff with him, like videos and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but obviously, I don't know him like personally at all. And I've never seen a concert of him. But you know, I mean, it is sad. I mean, he was still pretty young, like age fifty, fifty one or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, he was. Uh, they have thing from it, yeah, as far as I know, in terms of like why. But like, you know, obviously, like you know, it just happens. So I assume, yeah, you know, everyone's taking their time to grieve and stuff. So yeah, I saw them in when they came to Saskatoon. Uh, I think it was around 2008. Yeah, yeah I think 2008-ish. That would have um, been wasting. That was when they had that album with the... I think that one was my favorite album from them. The, I, I still can't remember the name of it. Is, is it Wasting Light? No, it's the one with the that has the Pretender in it. Oh, um, Pretender. Yeah. No, I think the fourth album, I think. That's like... One. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look it up quickly. Echo, silence, patience, and grace. That's what it was. Okay, that's what I'm gonna be fine. Yeah, when the fuck? Okay, just for my own amusement, I need to find out. Yeah, wasting like was 2011. Okay, never mind. I, I mixed the. Yeah, they had uh, they had Let It Die, The Pretender, and Long Road to Ruin. Pretend? That was that one was my favorite album from them. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so as I'm looking at it, so The Pretender, I love. Uh, Long Road to Ruins, obviously, pretty good too. Mm-hmm. Uh, two songs, other songs I really like on that album: "A Race for Place" and "Cheer Up Boys, Your Makeup's Ruined." So, the one I w- want to kind of focus on for a second is just "A Race for Place." Have you? Do you know which one I'm talking about when I say that? That's the one with like a really weird rhyme scheme. Race for like, Place, like A, B, and C rhyme, and then D rhymes with the next D. Huh. No, no, I haven't. Uh, I would recommend uh, searching it, it up later, obviously, after the podcast. Oh. Um, I really like the rhyme scheme of it. It's just, it, it's a unique rhyme scheme I don't see it very often in music. Obviously, a lot of times it's like, you know, like A and B will rhyme, or A and C and then B and D will rhyme, you know, type shit. But like the first three rhyming and the fourth one rhyming with the next fourth one is kind of a weird uh, mm-hmm. pattern, you know? I like it. But yeah, um, Basically, I saw them in Saskatoon when they, that album came out, and yeah, that was that was that was such a good concert from them. But the only thing that, that like I still remember from was like uh, Taylor Hawkins' like drum solo. It just it like uh, it was like between almost at the end of the show before the encore, where he just does like a drum solo for like five minutes. Yeah, that, that that's the only thing I can like. Um, remember for that concert, which was weird. Oh, it makes it's out of the ordinary, so it probably makes sense that you'd remember that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and he he seemed pretty energetic. So he, I don't know if you know much about the Foo Fighter War, but he joined in around like the third or fourth album. I forget the exact one, but because they had some Olivia before. Oh yeah. And uh, I don't know. I guess it's something about it that just didn't work out or whatever. And then yeah, Taylor joined for like the next several albums. Obviously. Huh. Interesting. Khakis like. Showing up over over here. It's like he wants to be in a podcast. I can. There we go. Special guest, uh, Binks, the cat. Say hey. Binks, hi the to cat. the audience. Can we get it? Let's get it. Okay, so the fact that he looked up there, is, when you say, say hi to the audience, you should, like, if you're able to, zoom in onto it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, just, like, still frame, like, zoom in. Yeah. Oh, he's gone now. He's gone. <laughs> Gone, yeah, gone but not forgotten. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard. So, like, out of the top five bands, I've only seen three of them live. And yeah, Foo Fighters, I have not seen live yet, unfortunately. Um, Offspring, I have not seen. That's one I really want to see. Uh, I've seen Green Day, I've seen Five Figure Death Punch, and I've seen. What the hell is that one? Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. Yeah, I was almost going to see The Offspring, but they canceled. When they were going to uh, Edmonton, 
I mean, it was such a weird. Good. They had. Uh, uh, I don't know if you know Super Plan, um, but they're going to open for them, which I thought was the weirdest. Weirdest uh, combination of the two because they're more pop rock, and then yeah, pop. Offspring is pop punk. <laughs> uh, no, I've never heard of them before. Yeah, but, they're uh, they're they are a Canadian band. They're more fam- popular in in Canada. But uh, well, you can't can't be relying on the 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 what the fuck is it? Bruce Springsteen is he? No, he's American. Who the fuck was? Obviously, there's Beaver, but like, there's some other guy you guys have. Who is it? Um. Well, let me let me name a few from the top of my head. Um. I can have, I can't think of their name. Off the top of my head. Well, now I'm drawing blanks. <laughs> <laughs> I swear we have famous like. Uh, we have famous uh, musicians. <laughs> but you know what? Canada, they they make music too. That's, that's we have, the tagline. We have uh, BTO, who did uh, "Taking Care of Business" and "Let It yeah. Ride," and also "Ain't Seen Nothing Yet." Yeah, but baby, and, you just seen. Yeah, yeah, they're from Vancouver, I think. That's cool. And you know, oh. my state has a cool music too. The Washington's pretty. Yeah, and, yeah, you, you got like so many people from Washington around. <laughs> Soundguard, obviously. Nirvana. Nirvana. Shit one. Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam. Yeah, Pearl Jam, that's a big one, yeah. Um, yeah, Soundgarden, uh, Foo Fighters. Well, eh. Tachy- technically. I think I'm well, pretty I, sure they formed in in Seattle. I don't know if they formed it. I mean, I don't know. It just it feels weird when like they weren't really like none of them were from there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, because I lived mostly or uh, on the East Coast for like ever, like in Virginia, that's where he was born and raised. Mm-hmm. And so he was part of like the Washington D.C. scene of like punk, like growing up. Hmm. In terms of, like what you know, the shows and shit. Huh. But. Uh, oh, Jimi Hendrix. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember it, all the bands I've seen at the uh, the Pop Museum. And that was there when I went there. I go there every time I go to Seattle to that museum. It's so much fun. I don't think I've been there, actually. I should check that out next time. I, granted, a lot of times when we're going to Seattle, we're not going there for, for fucking pleasure. You know, it's like <laughs> it's usually some little visit or some shit. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, have some- they um not only do they have music uh, uh memorabilia stuff, but they also have some like pop culture uh movies and uh horror movie uh prop memorabilia. Like they have, have like been- they have a whole like horror movie section at like the basement where you can see all the all the props like the axe from the the shining Freddy Fingers, uh, Gloves, Jason's Machete. Yeah, I have to check that out then. Like, this, or see if I can check that out next time. Like, I don't know. We don't really plan on going there again soon, but... Yeah. yeah. On the off chance we end up going that way. I love the... And I love the the, mark, the marketplace there, too. For all the food. I felt bad last time we went there is because, like, there was a... There was some woman there that was, like, selling, like, handmade, like, woven some sort of, like, you know, like, stuff, like, bags and stuff. And it's just, like, I could tell you put a lot of work into this. And this is really good art, but at the same time, like, I'm not going to buy a fucking $40 bag. It's, like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad because it's, like, this is just, like, this is not worth the price to me at all. But, like, I could tell how much hard work went into this. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen a place where the guys were throwing uh, fish around? Yeah, yeah, we I've walked through that whole area before. It's pretty funny. Pretty cool. <laughs> have, you, have you been to the famous gum wall? Oh, yes, I have there. I, 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 uh, unfortunately, I didn't have any gum with me. So I took one off the wall. No. <laughs> I chewed it and then I put it back in. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to taste the famous wall. <laughs> I wonder if this place fared with COVID. Yeah. <laughs> place. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> I can't <ugh. laughs> it's so so gross. I can tell you about um 
the first night I was there, we stayed there. I was, uh, it was also the last time I uh, slept walked. I have like, it was like only like three times I've ever, I've ever sleepwalked in my life. But the last time was in our first night in Seattle. Um, we got to a hotel and it was like, we had like the perfect, uh, the most perfect room. Cause like, as soon as you look outside the, it's like a small window, but the only thing that's covering that window is the space needle. <laughs> it's like the only thing you see at the window. It's like the most perfect view. Yeah. Like ever. It's, 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 it's it was so awesome. But basic, but anyway, um, my, uh, it was just me and my mom and, uh, my mom heard the jiggling, uh, in at the doorway uh, she couldn't see because it, it was it was blocked by the wall. You had to go around the corner to see the door, and she was yeah. panicking cause, and thought someone was trying to get in. <laughs> but uh, she she went around the corner and she didn't see me in in my bed. So she went around the corner and she saw me trying to <laughs> jiggle the door. <laughs> and uh, luckily, I'm so lucky that it was there were two types of locks um, uh, for it. Old. But the regular one, you know, with the chain and everything, that was that one was unlocked. But there was another one that that wasn't locked because so I couldn't figure out how to get out. And my mom's like, "You okay? What 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 are you doing?" And I was like, "I was I was talking to my sleep too. I was like, I I can't get out. I need to get out." And she's like, "What? Where you where do you need to go?" And I was like, "I need to get out. I can't get out." And then it took her like a second to realize, "Oh, he's uh, sleepwalking." <laughs> so she she like. Um, you know, directed me back to my bed <laughs> and laid me down, tucked, tucked me in. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had no uh, recollection of that happening. But uh, yeah, that's uh, the story of me sleepwalking in S Seattle, which is so, so thankful for that second law because who knows where I would have gone if I managed right. to get out. <laughs> I we she would have no idea where we were or where I was because we didn't know the street names or anything, and I right, didn't know right. where I was if I if if I snapped out if I snapped out of my dream I ended up in some random ass street or alleyway I would have I would have been fucked. <laughs> uh, you know that actually that sounds like a name of a song, Sleepwalking in Seattle. <laughs> oh, there's an actual yeah. song. <laughs> like a, that sounds like a good song title. Oh, <laughs> like you can make that a song title at some point. Just like yeah, even sleep nothing to do it. <laughs> oh man, have you ever uh, sleepwalked before? I think like a couple times, like as a kid. Mm -hmm. Nothing too. Crazy. Um, yeah, that was when I was like fourteen, I think thirteen. So that was yeah. like a long time ago. That was like ten years ago, actually. Holy shit! <laughs> God. A lifetime ago. Gosh, it's crazy how many th stuff we've like, I've done. Like you were born after two thousand three. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. But yeah, you. Uh, what was your school life? Like in in southern Washington, like did you have? Did okay, you so, just did well, you just have a elementary and high school or? No, yeah, I I moved there after the fact, so I was more like probably middle of Washington, maybe like west, like Midwest of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's weird because there is a Midwest of the United States. You know, like you take the weird shape of Washington, which is like a weird fucking, <laughs> uh, like whatever, right? And we're like off to this side. Yeah. That doesn't help at all, I'm sure. But like, you know, if it's like here, we're off. Like, I think you know, I, I think I get the idea. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. But yeah. Anyway, so like that was that was elementary school and middle school, huh. and I, I don't know, it was fine. I guess obviously a lot of people I grew up with, you know, some I knew from like daycare and preschool and shit. Mm -hmm. I lived in there for a bit. That was fine. Some of the people were dickheads. Actually, yeah. I, got, I got punched in middle school once because uh, I was dicking around. I don't know if I told that story and. The other podcast before mm -hmm. i might but it was basically that like 
I thought me and this guy were cool and like I made a joke and said like fuck you to him and like I guess he took it serious and then he punched me in the face like when I wasn't looking. <laughs> Last and that, that was fun. But uh <laughs> Yeah, no. Um our it's it's different in different provinces here, but in uh BC it's we started with there's like an annex school which is like kindergarten to grade three and then there's elementary which is grade three to grade seven and then there's high school which is grade eight to grade 12 we don't really have there's there's also no such thing as like freshman or senior like those words don't uh exist it's just grade eight grade nine or grade 10 11 12 which yep. uh honestly i think grade eight is is still a bit young to be in high school. Like, um, uh, and, and the other problem says that they do, they do start, uh, I believe this is here in Saskatchewan. They actually do start from nine, grade nine to 12, but it's, it is grade eight to 12, which is, I don't know. Grade eight was a pretty awkward year and grade nine too, but yeah. <laughs> yes. They're usually awkward for everyone. Aren't they? <laughs> oh yeah. At some point. I remember I was doing, uh, I was doing choir for those two years, seven and eight, and boy, uh, the summer in between did not do me any favors for the for the voice singing. That's when the voice dropped. I was like, oh, that's this is great. Because like I came oh. back in, the, right? <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, we're singing. And I'm just singing normally, like the same I was. And of course, he pick he picks me out of the group because like I sound different, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. It's like I'm not singing in tune, and it worked for me. Like in front of everyone else for like 15 minutes of the class, I'm like. Fuck, this sucks. <laughs> so I eventually got through it. It's just mainly like relearning it again, but it's like, damn it. Yeah. But uh... my voice didn't drop too much. Like, I still have a pretty high sounding voice. Um, but yeah. uh, I actually uh, <clears throat> found out that like I can like sing higher than I could before. Which is why well, I, I can sing higher and lower. I guess I just like my voice adjusted to like my um yeah. to the variety. I guess like in like in some like in some songs, like I the 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 notes I used I couldn't sing before I could sing now. Um, so here's a couple of example. My I don't know if you know much about music, but my lowest is a. My low note, lowest note is A two, and my highest is A four. But um, with, that doesn't mean it yeah. Be, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I can remember that some shit, but yeah. <laughs> but with the with the low one, it was it was for from a song from uh, No Effects called the Decline. Which is like a 19 minute song, by the way. It's like super long. But one of the songs in one part, there's like, uh, I think he sang in A, in low A, where it was like E. And I, I, I couldn't sing that one before. But now that now that's my lowest, my lowest one is like E. And, uh, yeah. Um, well, almost throat singing, but it's just, um, yeah. it's like just a border before it becomes throat singing, <laughs> which is, which is so weird because it's like, it's not my voice didn't get, it got deeper, but also I could sing higher. It's it's, it's so weird, from it. it. Just got stretched. Yeah, it just got stretched basically. <laughs> um. Like I I don't know if um my my theory could be like it's from when I played the bass clarinet in grade eight that does like a wind instrument so maybe like it helps with uh blowing into it like it kind of helps grow your your muscles your throat muscles I don't know something like that that may have been something that helped around that time but I'm not sure I don't know. Like that would help more with like breathing stuff than it would with like yeah like stitches specifically 
Because I don't like when you're blowing into that stuff. I don't. You don't really change your pitch too much because like you're you're putting your fingers on the different things to change the tone mm-hmm. of the thing. Right. You know, changing the pitch of your breath itself. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not like a musician. <laughs> no, I, who knows? Well, I mean, I guess technically I'm an accomplished musician with two diss tracks. Yeah. But. <laughs> I forget um, what the exact like things were, but I remember like when my voice ended up dropping. Like my high wasn't really as high as it used to be, but I remember he was like the the choir director was re- impressed with how low I was able to go. And yeah. I forget what it was, but like because I don't know if you went through like similar exercises to test it, but mine was like doing like a la 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 la, you know that type of shit. Yeah, like going yeah. as high, and then like a ba ba ba, you know, like until like just go help. Low he can. Hmm. And apparently, I got like super low. And after a while, he just like stopped because he's just like, you know, like whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah I, I went, I just looked up on YouTube on like which, which, uh, type of vo- voice I have. And like, uh, it, it, it fit mostly in a baritone section, but also yeah. I have like just as high as like the, tenors i think i can't remember which one which one is above baritone it's either alto or it may be alto i don't know alto Alto is like not the highest but like kind of in the middle because there's also bass which is below baritone right yeah isn't i'm pretty sure soprano's highest the soprano i think i think soprano's like high like high high yeah but yeah, that's what was what was I gonna say? That's how I figured out what my lows and my highs were, because I couldn't figure out what what range I wanted to sing in. Because like some songs I wanted to cover, but like they're just like just like really talented singers. They're just a couple yeah. of notes too high above my uh, range, and then there's like some like low low singers, which is like. A couple of notes too low for me. Right. Or I mean, just you know, barely. As much practice as you can do, there's only so much you can do with your voice. You know, you're not going to pull out the fucking Aretha Franklin, you know? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> uh. I mean, you know, the great thing about music is when you can do coverage, you can change the. Obviously, you can change it to where it's like where you, you know, that's stepping up and down. The thing, shit, of, yeah, but. that's the thing about uh, music theory. That's, that's one thing it, it does wonders is that being able to change the the keys of the song or the scale of it in order yeah. to to fit your uh your um vocabulary or not and that's not I mean, the word for it but you know <laughs> oh i i'm like the worst with names of stuff like you need to be able to do your spelling bee and while you're singing yeah <laughs> A, B, C is one, two, three. <laughs> it's like, uh, so, so you think you can spell? <laughs> you can spell. Uh, dude, I can like, <laughs> fail that. My mom especially would fail that TV show like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, fun times. How, how was your Canadian school life then? It was all right. Um, I definitely uh succeeded the most in music and uh yeah like every from grade nine to 12 i received like a a reward from them but the other subjects weren't uh weren't so great like uh math or english and uh, student otherwise yeah, I, I was I was a I was a C's good dis- degrees type of kid. It, it wasn't a purpose. I really was like just struggling trying. with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was really trying. Like um, with the setup is you know it's not for everyone, man. So yeah, whatever. Yeah, it, yeah. You can't. There there are like smart smart people in in the school in the schools. Which uh, was that? What were they called? There was there was like a certain section of uh kids who could be like 
go into harder classes. I forgot what nah. they called though. Well, there's like AP classes. I don't know if that's what they're called in where you're at. Oh, is that what? Uh, that is what it stands uh, for. I can't remember what, what was what they were called, but they're they were for the the you know the smart kids, and uh, yeah, it was it. It was, uh, I was still friends with a bunch of them, which is great, but, uh, I just couldn't, I just couldn't, uh, I was astonished by all the things they could memorize or can make up or, you know, their vocabularies and stuff. I was just like, I, I, I can't do this. <laughs> I, well, I never, I never been, to, I never started, but I was just like, there's no, there's no way <laughs> I was strugg struggling in the normal ones. You know what it is? It's like people just learn different. They're interested in different things. Like it's pretty easy for a lot of us to learn. Like as you can tell by all the useless shit that we all know. Like mm -hmm. you're not just you, everyone. Like if you can find a way to relate to something that you actually give a shit about, then it's a lot easier to learn things or connect oh, to yeah. other things. You're um, like you know. I mean, how much random Kingdom Hearts bullshit do you and I know that like? <laughs> could I tell you the capitals of the fifty states? Not anymore. I could have back in like fourth grade when they made me do it but after or fifth grade or whatever the fuck it was but afterwards like mm -hmm. i don't know and yeah i, mean, I was a good student so like it's not even just that it's just like i don't know <laughs> can you name every organization member yeah probably <laughs> and the 14 i don't, I don't know 100 what the they want for the other ones or let me let me think um i mean let me do it from the top of my head uh can you name an which which is the the kingdom hearts 2 one not the not the real one Oh, yeah, I could yeah in, from from first to third or fourteenth, I guess. Yeah. Uh. So we'll start with Xion, Roxas, Axel, Saix, Vexen, Xaldin, Zigbar, Xemnas, Luxord, uh, Marluxia, Lexius, um, Luxine. Yeah. Uh, there's one more, the Sciencey one. Is it Zex? I think it's Zexen, or. No, that uh, no Vexen. I already said yeah. that. Uh, who is the? Who... Uh oh, you mix. <laughs> it's the it's the one with the emo hair, but it's... yeah, yeah, you mix the two names together when you call them uh, Zexen. <laughs> so it's it has a Z, right? Yeah, yeah, it starts with the Z. Uh... you were close. I'm trying to like think what his. Uh... Real name is what what his like real name was like uh because you see him a lot in kingdom hearts 3 yeah. um terrible because i i know it <laughs> crap but i think i got everyone else though right it's just him yeah well as, well, as far as i know i to be honest i wasn't counting but like you know it's yeah. not <laughs> um shit if, if you want to know i can tell you no i i'm not i'm, a, I'm not i'm gonna I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to figure this one out because it's always like it's always like the last per. It's like the one I always get. Yeah. Uh, cause I, you cause... grabbed Alex Alexius is the most boring one out of the group. Like he's he's easily the worst fucking organization. Yeah, he, he member. just like yeah, he's like absolutely useless. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't know them as much because they. I used to play the PS2, uh, version, a lot. And that one didn't yeah. have any of the of the da data fights. It wasn't until the final mix version that had the data fights. Um, and I didn't play Chain of Memories um, until much later too, so I didn't know him as much. Right, uh, right. Zexion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and what? What's the somebody name? Uh. So it, it, it's, it comes with the I first, right? E, Enzo, that's what it was. Yep, yep, Enzo. There we go. <laughs> now trying, yeah, trying to remember oh, wow. their somebody names. That's that's a hard one. <laughs> oh man. Well, we get the King Mars quota for today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we said before the recording, we're just gonna we're, we'll eventually segue into like Kingdom Hearts. Like we always do. <laughs> oh, you know what I love about the states a lot? 
is that every uh, restaurant and fast food place uh, serves Dr. Pepper. And I think that's awesome. A lot of them do, yeah. Because uh, it counts as, as a Pepsi product, usually in-state. Because like, it, it's a weird yeah. like, way they have it. Or, it's yeah, like, Dr. Pepper is, is part of Coke in the States. And it's part of Pepsi in Canada. Okay, well, maybe in Canada, but like in terms of internationally, usually what it's uh, it's Coca does like it's like I don't know, Coke does like sixty percent of it. Pepsi does like another thirty or something. Mm -hmm. They have for Seven Up Company does like another little bit because they have their own little bit of distribution. But uh, yeah, they have it split up because at one point one of the companies tried to buy it out and like a judge blocked it because like didn't know have a market on the peppered flavored drink, you know, market like a. <laughs> sure why not i guess yeah <laughs> but yeah for the most part for the states a lot of times it counts as a pepsi product like in the stores and uh, restaurants and shit yeah which is kind of annoying some places like i go to some theme parks like disney for example or like there was a water park near us which is pretty good and uh, they don't have it because they have coke products and dr Pepper doesn't count near it so mm -hmm. oh you know what i enjoy that we don't have is uh, vanilla Coke. I used to drink that a lot in the States whenever you get the chance. I drank a lot of pop in the States because there's like some of them that we don't have in Canada. Yeah, well, you know, we're sugar junkies here and yeah. so we have like everything. But actually, you know, I was, I was just drinking um, that we have, but that you guys don't have is uh, uh, Nest Tea's Iced Tea. Um, I know that your guys' iced tea is, is like taken literally, which is like tea, um, that's iced. Yeah, tea that gets shot in the back of the van. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, ours is a bit different. I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just, it's just sweeter. Like it's it's more sweet tea, but it's not like it's not even like tea. It's just like just a really sweet tea here, and we just call it iced tea because it's like it's everywhere, you know, in restaurants and stores. And uh, yeah. when I went down to the states and or asked for an iced tea, uh, I was absolutely shocked with the difference their iced tea is yeah, over I there. And I had I had no idea that we had to, we just had to ask for sweet tea and not iced tea because otherwise it's just plain tea with ice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've never been much of a tea guy, so I never even know most of that shit to be honest. Yeah, we we it's not even like a tea. It's like it's like iced tea is not even considered tea. It's it's actually more considered pop than it is tea. Like that's how like sugary it is, but it's like so good. Sounds like a crime against nature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder what the British people think about that if they come come to Canada and ask for iced tea, and it's just like the yeah. sweetest thing. <laughs> like we, we didn't, we don't have you one thumb so you could fuck up our tea. Yeah, it's like <laughs> fucked up our tea by throwing in the harbor. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but what I keep think I keep saying is like being in Canada is like having, uh. Britain and the United States as the divorced parents where yeah. Canada gets like two Christmases <laughs> and gets like both presents for both Britain and presents from the States. <laughs> Probably not a bad comparison, actually. No. Yeah, it's it's pretty close. Like we, uh, the pop, some of the stuff we have that's actually from Britain that I know of is the uh, Maltesers uh, chocolates. Those ones are popular in Britain, and we have those in Canada too. They're kind of like uh, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to explain. Do you know? Do you guys have the Whoppers? Like not the burger, yeah. but the but like the candy Whoppers. The, I hate them. It, but they're yeah, like the have... they're like the chocolate balls, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like kind of like those, but they're better. Like I I hate I hate those Whoppers ones. It's it's too weird. I don't like them, but I like the Maltesers ones. Um, what else? Coffee crisp. I think that's actually just Canadian, but that's it's like yeah. a coffee. It's a coffee flavored chocolate bar. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of it. Uh, I hate coffee, so I guess it wouldn't be for me. <laughs> yeah, I hate the 
taste and the smell of coffee. So. Really? I thought that yeah. the, it's it's literally what coffee is, uh, smells like, you know? Yeah. If you I could, would, I would if hate. You, like I as a kid, I have I I smelled coffee all the time for my uh, when I was at my grandparents when they were making. They usually have coffee in the mornings all the time. But when I smell it, it's like I as a kid, I always wanted coffee. But when you when you, when you drink it, it's like ugh, awful. <laughs> but uh, coffee crisp is literally what coffee smells like. It's like it's, so it's like perfect for me. <laughs> See, I don't know as much about the taste. I mean, I've tasted it before, obviously, mm-hmm. and it's like whatever. I mainly hate the coffee ground smell. Oh yeah. Before you make it, like that shit, fucking. Ugh. Yeah, it's good to have like a faint whiff of it, not like straight from like from the jar right into your nose. It's a bit strong then, but I, like I, I, I do. I, I I do like a faint with with of uh, coffee. But uh, I think that's all the time we have for now. So uh, anything you want to say? Uh, any any self plugs, shameless plugs? Oh yeah, let's do self. Let's do the shameless pug. Uh, I, I said pug. Right, yeah, I got a <laughs> shameless, dog. shameless pug. Yeah, shameless pug. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, no shameless plug. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'd stream on Twitch. I had trophy hunt games, and then I play some daily missions and games. Sometimes do the you know some multiplayer games. That's a uh, Twitch TV slash GD Gypsy. Wow. And the that's usually my username across like a bunch of shit. So yeah, like place and yeah, 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 Discord, yeah, and that stuff. So yeah, go watch, go follow him on twitch.tv slash gd gypsy, and uh, yeah. thanks for having uh, or thank you. For-